the second part of the module internet and search engine here we are going to talk about search engines As you know in the previous lecture we talked about internet and how internet is important and its advantages and disadvantages and who are the audience and who are the people who use internet in today's class we are going to talk about the second part of the lecture which is called the search engine You have probably been using search engines, but perhaps may not be as effectively as possible. Everybody, when you ask him to search for something online or to Google it, he actually knows that he's going to search for it online. But are you using it as effective as possible? A lot of information are available online, but not all of them are completely accurate. So if you are in a pool where you can, you have the possibility of getting things that are accurate and things that are not accurate, how do you know which one are accurate? How do you find which one are actually the right and which one are wrong? The web page addresses are constantly changing. It may only be available for a short time. So just because you know something is available online, if you didn't visit the website more often, then it's possible that that particular site has been changed. That's what we do with internet. Let's talk about the history of search engines. In 1990, IKEA was the first tool created by Alan Entage for indexing and considered the phase basic search engine. What began as school project at a university in Montreal was an index that predated the World Wide Web. In 1993, Lycos was developed, followed by Jughead, Wandex. In 1984, we have Galaxy, Webcrawler, Yahoo, and Infosec. In 1995 and afterwards, Excite, Infosec, Alta Vista, and Metacola were developed, and the next generation comes afterward, like the Hotboard, Dogfile, Google, and Axe.com. All of them debuted after the 1995 generation. So if you look at it from 1980 up to 1995, up to later years, we have seen a lot of, lot of search engines. But we know what take over all search engines today is Google. Google has dominated all those search engines. All the things you see on search engines is not synonymous to Google. These search engines are of types. The first type we have is called the web directory. And a web directory or web guide is a hierarchical representation of hyperlinks. The top level is typically a wide range of general, very general topics. Each topic contains hyperlink of more specialized subtopics. And it's very easy to use, just like you will see in the next slide. Looking at this, you see that it's a hierarchical representation. Ads is the more general uh, topic. While if you go to ads, under ads, you see ad history. Under ad history, you see directories. So you continue moving like that until you reach what you are actually looking for. And that's why web directory is actually very easy to use. Popular web directories include Google, which have the site www.google.com, cnetsearch.com, Excite, EOL Life, Lycos, Yahoo, EOL, everywhere. They are all popular, some of the popular web directories that are available. Next, after the web directory, we have the search engines. And search engines, a search engine is a computer program that does the following allow users to submit a query that consists of a word or a phrase. It searches the database, it will turn a list of suitable URL which match your query, which allow user to revise as a submit. Just like you see, this is a place where you submit the query. And after submitting the query, you click on Google search or you click on I'm feeling lucky. When you click on Google search, it searches the database and it will release all the list of possible website URLs which match your query. And you are, that will allow you to revise and submit again for further information. Some popular search engines include AOL Everywhere, Alta Vista, Excite, Hotboot, Magalin.com, and Google.com. So these are some of the popular search engines we have. But just like I said previously, that Google have taken over everything. Whatever you're looking for, the more you search Google, you're actually going to see a lot of it. it has bigger databases than most of the other search engines
The next category is the meta search engines. A meta search or all in one search engine performs a search by use of more than one other search engine to complete the search job. If there are duplicates, they are eliminated. And the results are ranked according to how well they match with the query you sent. They have the advantage of a single query can access a lot of databases, while the advantage is a high nose to signal ratio. Lots of matches will not be suitable for you. So if you wanted to find an information on something and use a meta search engine, the advantage you have, the advantage you have is that it will search more than one database looking for the information that corresponds to your search. But the advantage is that also, whenever you have many results, you end up thinking of which one to choose, and that will not be a good signal for somebody who is searching for an information quickly and faster. Some popular meta search engines include metasearch.com or the www.metacola.com or metafind.com or dog5.com. All these perform the function of a meta search engine, as you can see in the next slide. Example of how meta search looks like. You see the meta search actually searching Yahoo, Alta Vista, and Lycos in the first. Uh, figure and we have the meta crawler which also search different databases. Next, we have the white pages and the yellow pages. The white page allows users to look for information about individuals. People use white pages to track down telephone numbers and email addresses of people. But the problem is people can abuse white pages, and that is why some people think that white pages are an invasion of their privacy. But that's not a big concern. As of the world we live in today, people go on Facebook and put information about themselves, their phone number, their email addresses, their contact address, where they work, and everything free of charge. So apart from the white page, we have the yellow pages, which contains information about businesses. So if you're looking for information about businesses, you can go to a yellow page to actually look for that. Some popular white pages are bigfoot.com, people.yahoo.com, whoware.com. And some popular yellow pages is yp.yahoo.com and superpages.com. Assuming you're comparing the two, directory and white pages. A directory allows you to explore and get what you want eventually, while a search engine brings you to the exact page on the words or phrases you are looking for. For example, when you're using, you are looking for something concerning food, you use a directory to find cooking related website, while you use a search engine to find a specific recipe by providing the name of the ingredient you can also use a directory to find like something like a travel guide in a country while you use a search engine to find transportation schedule in a country maybe in south africa for instance now let's talk about how you do search how do you search for example what you do first is you open your browser and you type www.google.com www.yahoo.com example if you use www.yahoo.com what do you see you first see the header which is the header. The header contains the Yahoo logo and some advertisement. Then you see the information bar, which contains other hyperlinks. If you wanted to link to other places on the website, then there is an information bar that contains that. Then the next thing you see is the site form area, which contains a form which allows you to type a query that you are looking for. Then we have the directory area, which is a large number of categories and channels. Then we have the Yahoo link, which links to other Yahoo websites. So Yahoo has other links, the news, the email, and what have you. So you see that Yahoo link in that particular page. Then you see the footer, which contains information about Yahoo copyright and a disclaimer. If you open Google, you see something similar, maybe with some little, little changes. And looking at this, you see at the top most is the Yahoo logo, which is the header. Then after the Yahoo logo, what comes next is the information bar, which contains information about other hyperlinks. Then you see the search area, which comes immediately below that, which contains a form which allows you to type in your, your query. Then the directory area, which has a large number of categories and channels. Then below, you also see a link to other Yahoo site and all at the end at the footer you see information which contains information about Yahoo copyright and disclaimer. Now 
when you are ready to search after typing yahoo.com or google.com there are some terminologies that you need to understand the first one is search tool a search tool is any mean to locate any information on the internet then we have what we call the query which is the information type in the form of the search engine so any information you are looking for you type it in the form of a query then we have the syntax of the query that is the rules we follow when constructing a valid query so if you are looking for something information there are ways we follow in typing that particular information into the search tool then we have the semantics rules for defining the meaning of the query so the meaning of the query is defined in the query semantics then we have the heat or match a url that search the engines returns for a specific query so when you send a query and you get information back what do you get back is a heat or a match then we have the relevancy score a value that indicates the quality of the url which maps close to the query one a hundred so if you have the information and that information is relevant to your search query then that information will be displayed to you according to its relevance score we also have the pattern matching queries and which we call the fusy query you can e enter on grammatical sentences, incomplete sentences, fragment, disjunct phrases, nonsense word. The seal will return back answers. The seal will return back hits a match. The search engines get collection of all the keywords that are there and brings out the information for you. Any required information will be marked with a plus, and any prohibited information will be marked with a minus. So there is also the boolean query. A boolean query is a query that consists of keywords but with logical operators and or or not. If you type x and y, it will return URLs that contains both x and y at the same time. When you type x or y, it will return URLs that contains either x or y or both. When you type x and not y, we will return URLs that contain x and not contain y. And we use the ampersand sign for the and we use the slash sign for the o we use the exclamation for the not we use the like the appropriate the near sign for the near something that is very close we use the and operator for narrowing your query if you know that your target document will contain a group of keywords list them using the and operator so if you want you to have any information about something and something use a and b I use the O operator for broadening a query. If you can think of related words for a topic, list them using the O operator. You can talk about A or B or C or D. The not operator is used to redirect a query. So you have a search item, but you don't want it to go one way, you want it to go the other way. You use the not operator to redirect that particular query. So if you find that a keyword or phrase is leading irrelevant hits, then you present it in the query as a not keyword as you can see this is an example of using uh the boolean queries the and the o and the not there's another thing we use to improve our search that is the wildcard the wildcard are useful for retrieving variation of a word for example if you use art star this will search for art, artwork, artist, artistry, and so forth. Anything that starts with ERT, I end with anything, will be part of the uh, hit. And this wildcard is an excellent way to broaden a search. We have different wildcards and are used by different search engines. The most common ones are the star, the hash, and the question mark. Advanced search option to get better results. You can use the and. Just like we talked about in the boolean search query and or and, and not and near to make sure to search better other options you use is the anchor text and the anchor text you find pages that contains the specific word or phrases in the text hyperlink you can use the applet class to find pages that contains a specific java applet and you can use the domain to find pages within the specific domain you can use the host to find pages on a specific computer <clears throat> you can use the image to find pages with images having a specific file name. you can use the like url text to find pages similar or related to a specific url you can use the link to find pages with a link to a particular page 
in the URL text. You can use the text to find pages that contain the specific text at any other page on the image tag. You can use title to find pages that contain the specific word or phrase in the page title. You can use URL to find pages with a specific word or phrase in the URL. All this are used to make sure that we have better form of search to get better heat and better results. The first thing you do is to find a good search engine. And a good search engine meets the following conditions. The first one is the user friendliness. It has to be have a user friendly environment. Two, it has to be easy to understand and convenient to access. And it also should have a large index database such that it is assigning a very good relevancy score. When you do that, you learn the syntax of that particular search engine and forget about others. The example of that is Google. Google is user friendly, it's convenient to access, it has very and easy to understand documentation and it assigns good relevancy score in addition to it being a large index database. The other times when you have too many hits, you get your results and too many hits and you don't understand which one to pick, what you need to do is specialize your query. You use the pattern matching query, you add more keywords so that you make sure that you have less results to choose from. You use the boolean query and the not to exclude some unwanted pages. You try capitalizing proper nouns or names, use a directory to locate your information, all this to make sure that you specialize your search. On the other hand, when the hits are too small, what you need to do is generalize your query. You need to generalize your query to ensure that you didn't have few hit. You use pattern matching query to eliminate one of the most specific words of the query. Use boolean queries operator like the and, the not, and the all to make sure that you have better hit. Use a directory or meta search engine if you still cannot locate the match URL. Now let's talk about how the search engine works. We have the user interface which allows you to type a query and display the results. It provides a mechanism for a user to submit a query to the search engine. It uses forms, very user friendly, and the user interface displays the search result in a convenient way. A summary of each match page is shown. The next thing is the searcher, which is a program that uses the search engine database to locate the matches for a specific query. The database of a search engine holds extremely large index pages, a highly efficient search algorithm developed by different computer scientists is necessary to make sure that you have a very good searching and sorting methods. The next after the searcher is the evaluator, which returns a set of URLs that match your query. Not all the hits equally match your query. More references to the page, the ranking of the page will be higher. It will also calculate the relevancy score, which varies from one engine to another the number of times the word appears, the query word appear in the title, the query words appear in the meta tag. The next and after the evaluator is the gatherer. The gatherer is a program that transverses the web and gathers information about the web document. It runs at a short and regular intervals. It returns information and will be indexed with the database. There are alternative names for the gatherer, which is we have both. We have Crawler, we have Robot, we have Spider, and we have Form. And the last but not the least is the indexer, which organizes the data by creating a set of keys or index. This index needs to be rebuilt frequently. The search engine is a very complex and needs to break down into different components. In order to ensure the return URL is not out of date, we need to update it frequently. We have what we call the link popularity. Link popularity is the total number of websites that link to your site. If a lot of websites are linking to your site, it means that whenever a search engine is searching for the particular website, it will return in almost all the search engines because a lot of websites are being linked to your site. So that is what we call link popularity. Now we talk about some of searching tips. While searching, you've been natural. That is the first thing you've been natural. 
For instance, now the question says, is cell phone dangerous? Don't write, is cell phone dangerous? I would know. What you do is, you search cell phone, then you search dangerous. Then when you put the two together, you see, okay, cell phone and dangerous, do they come together? Second is capitalize. You always use lower cases. You only stop from using lower cases when you are using for, looking for proper nouns like names of people or name of places where you have to start to capitalize the first letter. Use uncommon words, keywords. The most specific result will return to you. Think of a value and a common keyword. If you are starting a particular domain and that particular domain have a keyword, use it because that will tilt your search into that particular domain. When you want to use a require word, use plus sign. And when you want to exclude a word, use the minus sign. And ensure that you use the correct spelling. Beware of the difference between English and American. Like the color with C-O-L-O-R and the color with C-O-L-O-U-R. You avoid stop words. Like D, like is, like of, and what have you. You avoid using them. Just like in the example I give, is cell phone dangerous? You forget about the is. Just type cell phone and dangerous and see what will be the result. Then you also use wildcard. Use wildcard like asterisk in some search engines and hash and question marks to make sure that your searching is better. Now, Assuming you have a website, your own, your own website yourself, like Bio University Kano has a website. How does, how do Bio University can ensure that whenever people are searching for Bio University Kano, the first option that comes is Bio University Kano. So what factors affect your site ranking? The first factor that affects site ranking is what we call the keyword prominence. And it means how early in a website do the keyword first come? The first element in HTML is the title tag. If the title tag that says, this is my homepage, it means that that particular keyword is a homepage. If in your title, you have Bioinvestic Canoe, it means whenever someone is searching to title, he will see Bioinvestic Canoe. The second one is the keyword frequency. Search engine may determine your site popularity by checking how frequently the keyword or phrase appears on the page. If the keyword is Bioinvestic Canoe, how many times do you see Bioinvestic Canoe in BUK website? And if the keyword is BUK, how many times did you see BUK in the BUK website? Then the next thing is keyword weight, which is also called the keyword density, which is measured by comparing the number of keywords appearing on the web page with the total number of words on the page. So when you look at the density, if most cases we try not to exceed keyword weight of 3 to 10 percent. So we see a lot of keyword that whenever somebody is looking for that particular page, that keyword will actually try to come. Then the next one is keyword proximity. The placement of keywords on the web page in relation to each other is called the keyword proximity. Then the next one after keyword proximity is keyword placement, which the site engine favor website that contains keyword in the title tag, the keyword meta tag, the header one tag, the first 25 words of a body, the hyperlinks, the image tag, text near the end of document. All these are things that people can consider when they are designing their own website. And I think this is more closer to people who are into web design than people who are just using it for search engine. But if you have a website of your own and you want to make sure that when people are searching for the website, then you have to take all this into cognizance. The keyword prominence, the keyword frequency, the keyword weight, the keyword proximity, the keyword uh, placement. The same thing with the click popularity and sickness. We talked about the click popularity before, which is the measure of the number of clicks received by each site in the site in Jerusalem webpage. And the sickness is the measure of the amount of time a user spend at a particular site. It is calculated according to the time that elapses between each of the user click on the search engine result page. So if you click on a particular page and you stay longer on it, then it is increasing its thickness. In summary, whenever you are searching for information, 
use different resources to search different kind of information. Use successful query refinement to achieve effective search queries. You should make sure that you think carefully for the keywords type in the search queries so that you can get better search results. Use Boolean queries where you need combination of keywords and or or not to make your search better. Think carefully when you create your own homepage so that whenever you create your home, uh, own homepage, it can easily be indexed by search engine. Look at things like the keyword prominence, keyword frequency, keyword weight, keyword proximity, keyword placement, click popularity, and thickness when designing your own web page so that it can be indexed by search engine. Thank you. If you look at it, from the beginning of the class, we talk about internet, how well you should use the internet. Then we talk about search engines, what are the procedures, what are the processes you actually follow to have better search results and refine your searches and make sure that whenever you all have your own site, how do you use Boolean queries to navigate and make better results whenever you are having your search. And also, if you have your own web page that people visit for search engine to index it and return it whenever they are people are looking for keywords then you have to follow some methods on which we talk about the prominence frequency weight proximity placement and others uh, thank you so much for listening and i remain sagir m Tanimo from the department of computer science by your university Kano. And my contact information is on the Moodle website, which you can actually contact me and ask me any questions on things that are not clear for you. Thank you so much.